So, build update on the Sling TSI. As you can see, I've made a little more progress since the last video. I don't remember exactly where we stopped off. Uh, I got all of the uh, uh, soundproofing foam put in this section underneath here. Actually, I put some underneath here too. Um, I installed the carpet in the lug luggage extension channel box, whatever. And I used uh, this barge cement. Someone online, and I would love to credit who, it, who suggested it, but I don't remember. Uh, someone on the Facebook Sling Builder site recommended this, I think. Um, but it, it's worked really, really well. It's really smelly. I suggest that you have a well-ventilated area. I, I'm working in a hangar, so I can open my hangar door, which is a 12 by 40, so it lets a lot of air in because it's strong. Um, but it's like old, it's like a, it even has a brush, like rubber cement from when you were a kid in kindergarten, except the stuff is way stronger and it smells way worse. Uh, this is a quart. It comes in pints, quarts, and I think you can buy a gallon. Um, I went through quite a bit of it, probably two-thirds of this quart, doing uh, this, and then I also did the center console I'll show in a second. Uh, so I, I, I bought one just to kind of see if I liked it and then and, and to make a choice on whether I wanted to do all of the carpet with it, and I think I am. So I just bought two more of these, and we'll see how long that goes. Um, but uh, it's contact cement, so you put it on one surface, then you put it on the carpet and then you leave them separate and let them dry for a little bit. And then you, you push it into place. And then I bought this roller again on Amazon. It's just easy uh, for five bucks or something. And then you just, that way you can put a lot of pressure on it to make them contact. And I'm, I'm pretty impressed. I did this late last night and it is, it's tight. And it says it's waterproof and it's designed for shoes to, uh, to glue shoe leather together on a pair of shoes. So I figure if, if leather shops recommend this for repairing shoes, it's gotta be able to stand up to some pretty good uh, force and vibration and moisture. So anyway, uh, we won't know long-term for a while, but uh, for right now, I'm impressed with it and I, and I bought more. So uh, again, uh, safety precautions have a well-ventilated area because it does smell, it has, uh, uh, I don't know if you can see that. Tuline, heptane, ethyl acetate. Those are the active ingredients. Uh, very strong smelling. So, uh, as you can see, I, I've kind of just sort of started laying things into place for the wiring just to see how everything's going to route. Nothing is permanent yet. This is the oxygen port for the rear passenger. I've got one on each side. Uh, headset jacks, they're just lightly screwed into place. Um, my plan originally was to route, uh, I've got a, a cut through over here in the floor, and then it would come over to here. Uh, Cause I thought with the, this being the baggage, I wanted as few wires here just to keep them out of the way. So I thought I'd move it over there. I don't know if that's going to work um, because of the, uh, the cable is up. The cable tray thing is up here that holds the parachute cables. Uh, I have a non parachute model with the cables installed in the canopy. So I still have this, this cable tray. So I got to see how I can route these underneath it and keep them all tucked away. So I think it'll work, but that's still to be determined. Um, I installed this. This is the reinforcer for the rear seat belt. Uh, don't forget there's a little strip under here. I actually forgot it, got it all clecoed, started riveting it, and then realized I forgot the little reinforcing plate. Had to come back and I had to drill out uh, four of these. And it actually extends past it. So don't forget that little, it's just a little thin plate. And then when I riveted past here, it was pushing down. I had to hold it pretty tight to push the rivet through to make sure it grabbed that little thin strip of metal. Uh, these are my GPS antennas. Uh, I'm going to put them up here. Um, I just got a grommet and uh, kind of ran them behind here where this is kind of an out of the way area. Again, 
that's the plan. We'll see how all this is going to work uh, once I get the skins in place and if everything seems to work out. Um, but ideally, I would have I have uh, two GPS antennas and one has two connectors because it has XM and then it has the backup GPS. I think it's the G3X and then the XM and then this is the primary to, for the, uh, the GTN GPS. So that's going to be the front one is like a teardrop. Then there's a square one that has the, the XM and the double that's going to be up here. So I put the ELT in. I, uh, I mounted it on the side rib. Someone else had done that and said that it was in the book that actually Artex says not to attach it to the bottom. And that's probably for crash survivability. If it's attached to something sideways, it's not uh, being grabbed if in a crash, I assume. I don't know any other reason for not putting it on the bottom other than just not putting more rivets through the bottom of your plane. So I attached it sideways. I'll come around on the other side and show that. Uh, and I pulled the wiring harness um, into the plane just to kind of um, show uh, where everything is, uh, but it's not, I'm, I, it's going to get pulled out. I'm not ready to lay it in. It just gets in the way, but, uh, here's where I put the ELT. So the next thing I worked on was the uh, center console. Uh, this is, uh, not a really difficult project and, uh, was a good thing to do. I'm still waiting on some parts on the uh, fuselage, so I can't put the side skins on. Uh, so I was just looking for some filler projects to do. So I, I built this yesterday um, and got the leather put on. Again, I used that barge cement. It, it worked well. Um, I didn't put the Velcro. There's, there's a Velcro strip and it comes with the other side and adhesive. Uh, I didn't put that on. Um, when I, when I pulled this, it's got some of these, you know, kind of folds where the, the leather, even when I stretched it out, it, it seemed to kind of fold up. It's the only, the only disappointment, but I don't think I'm going to need the Velcro and it seals fine. So I think we're fine. Uh, cutouts for seat belts. If I can find some grommet material, I'll probably put a grommet in there. Um, Evan, in one of his videos, he had some sort of a grommet. Uh, that's not an included grommet, so I'll have to find something. And then uh, I posted this, uh, my wife thought it was funny. She was out here and she said that looked like a minion head. Um, so anyway, I don't have this attached yet, but uh, I, this is, uh, I think Garmin calls this the GSB 15. Uh, it's just a power supply. So this is for the rear seat passengers where they can plug in their devices and then the pass through grommets for the headset jacks. And then also I drilled a fifth hole. I, I didn't do uh, those uh, Bose connectors, the Limo connectors. Uh, I don't have those on my headset, so I just didn't even bother. Although Midwest did pre-wire for it. I'm just not installing them. But the, uh, the fifth hole is going to be for the backup oxygen supply, which is uh, actually that's the other side of it. Here it is. And uh, I'll do a whole video on my oxygen system, so uh, I'll leave that for when I go into it. But this will be the other, the other connector that's in that, that fifth hole. And then we get to the, the fuel tank saga. I mentioned in this a, a couple videos back about my fuel tank, um, that I built it and I had an air leak. And uh, I, uh, I mixed up, I had a pint of... Uh, tank sealant and I filled two different little areas where I had bubbles. One of them was right here where this little purple mark is, if you can see that. And then there was one further down here and they're very small, little, just very bubbling, very small airdrop. But I went ahead and sealed those up, waited, waited a week. And then I tried it again and I still had a very slow air leak. Um, Again, I think I, I got this off of the Facebook Sling Builder site. Somebody else recommended it who was recommended it by someone else. Uh, it worked good. This is an Amazon part. I'll put it in the description. Um, so I couldn't find the, the slow leak, which was driving me crazy. So I bought a little boroscope. 
it was like $25 on Amazon and I stuck it in here and uh, I was able to find another leak but let me tell you what I did before that so I got some of this which is I got this from an auto parts store it's leak detection dye and it uses an infrared flashlight which I have somewhere um, that shines infrared on this dye and makes it glow well so I, I I put in like a gallon of gas with the dye and my idea was I was just gonna kind of shake it around and see if I could find a little bit leaking out well in my mind I have a very 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 slow uh, air leak I'm not gonna be leaking gas it's gonna be barely enough to be detectable well that was not the case so I put in a, over a gallon of gas and then I proceeded to immediately have a gallon of gas all over the floor of my hangar. So, um, because I wasn't anticipating that, I didn't even have the hangar door open. Gas went all over the floor. It was a real mess. So, uh, a couple warnings there. One, even a very small leak can leak a lot of gas. And two, do it outside. The reason I did it in my hangar is because I thought with the flashlight, and this is a UV dye, I needed it to be dark. I would turn the lights off to find this microscopic hole. Well, evidently it wasn't so microscopic and the fuel found exactly how to flow through it quite well. And unfortunately, it's nowhere I could get to. So I again, I, I let all the gas dry out of it over a period of two weeks. I cleaned up my shop, left the door open for days. Uh, the hangar and uh, there's no more gas smell in here but um, I, I didn't want to go with gas again obviously so I used water and then I used my boroscope and went in to try to find the leak and luckily I found a leak and you're not going to be able to see it probably if you uh, in this corner <laughs> uh, Let's see, where can I put the camera? So where the where I'm kind of shining in this corner, on the other side of that rib is where the leak seemed to be. And there's a little hole there that's meant to allow gas to move between the baffles or whatever this rib kind of serves as a baffle. And uh, anyway, I, uh, I mixed up some Pro Seal and I, I got a long skinny, I had a bamboo stirring stick that I cut in half and I just sort of kept pushing it into that channel right there where that hole is. So we're on day two of letting that pro seal dry. I'm hoping that'll fix it because otherwise I got to pull the back channel off and rebuild the whole tank. So I really don't want to do that. Um, but two advisements over using gas in your fuel tank. If you have a leak, I wouldn't do it or be very cautious and expect that you will get gas leaks um, and make a mess. Although this dye does work. Um, I could see the glowing in the dark gas running all over the floor of my hangar. So anyway, that's it for this week. Uh, I'll let you know the saga of the fuel tank. This is the right fuel tank. Uh, in another week or so, I'll test it with water. Uh, and then air if it if no water comes out then I'll fill it with air and see what we got Hopefully I was able to fill in whatever little itty bitty hole I had uh, but if not we'll uh, We'll go extreme. We'll drill out all the rivets. We'll pull the back channel off and we'll slop a whole lot more sealant on but uh, Anyway, that's it for this week um, I should get a bunch of parts in uh, early next week, which will allow me to start the side skins and uh, the side channels and everything to build up the, the front and center part of the fuselage, which I'm very excited about. So until next week, have a good weekend.